This is Overdue Advice, the podcast about cash flow strategies to grow your business. Brought to you by MetCredit. Everybody pay up. Welcome to Overdue Advice. I'm Andreas Schwabi. Overdue Advice is presented by MetCredit. MetCredit is Canada's leader in the ethical recovery of accounts receivable. They're debt collectors, and they're good at it. The popular image of debt collection is a bunch of snarling, angry, vindictive trolls who just want to make your life miserable. They follow you around with a money magnet, siphoning your hard-earned cash that you want to use for other things. But debtors have already used their money for things, and they can't afford the other things. Small and medium-sized businesses value their customers just because of their size. Relationships with customers is more personal. The personal connection should make trust and honesty easier, but clients will go into debt for any number of reasons, including just allowing the debt to increase because they're too embarrassed to talk about it. Debt is a human problem, and remembering that is a big part of the job. Today, we're going to explore the job itself, what it actually takes to be a debt collector, and what the job is actually like. Today on Overdue Advice, the job of debt collection. Katrina Nilsson is a veteran of debt collection and Met Credit's collection manager of government services and telecommunications. And she's here to talk about the job and being a debt collector. Hi, Katrina. Hi. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, how's your week been? Uh, it's been busy. How's the, how's the season? Is it sort of busier after Christmas uh, with debt collection? Yes and no. It, we're coming into spring, so that... Uh, it, that does get a lot busier. Does it really? Yeah. How come? Yeah. Well, people are coming out of Christmas. They're finally coming into a little bit more of an income or funds. Oh, so they're they're getting their money back. They paid off their debt and now they're going back into debt. Absolutely. And when we talk about the job of a debt collector, clearly that's it's a pretty straightforward job. You call people and say, pay your debt. Yes. So how did you become a debt collector? What's, uh, what's your story? My story is I was working as a waitress and doing, you know, little jobs here and there. And I wanted something more stable, something that I could put a career in. And, you know, I just applied for it. Um, and I I managed to get a call back. And so that's kind of where I started. Do, it you, was, do you remember what you were thinking at that time? Like, what were you thinking? Ah, this is just it's an office job. That'll be better than what I'm doing. Or what was your thinking? I actually didn't really know too much about debt collections. I just thought, oh, oh great. It's an office job. It's something I can build on. Uh, you know, I was I was really young when I started into at 18. And um, so I just took the job because I needed a, a, a good job. So I basically took it based off of that. And uh, and then it turned into a career for me. So you've been there how long now? I've been with my current company for almost 13 years. 13 years. Yeah. And you've been a debt collector for? 14. So you did it for a year with someone else. Yes. And clearly, if you stayed at Met Credit for 13 years after the first one, that was obviously a good choice. Yeah. So let's talk about things like the kind of person for the job. Well, any type of person can do it. It's really uh, based off what you want to do. You know, almost anybody has the ability to do it. It's whether or not they they want to put themselves into it and retain it and go forward with it. And what are the things that people find they like the resistance? Like obviously, asking for money is going to be something you know people are yeah, generally comfortable. Well, people have a, a difficult time asking for money. It goes against everything that you're taught growing up. Right. You know, you're you're taught not to ask people financial questions like that. Uh, not talk about money. Um, it's kind of taboo. And now you're coming into a job that's teaching you exactly everything yeah, do the opposite. Thing, yeah, do the thing that's rude. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, how much are, what are you taking in for income? What are your expenses? Um, you're asking all these very personal questions about money that nobody wants to release. Um, but it, you have to, at the end of the day, to try and help these people. How do you deal with the discomfort of that? Like, obviously, you've been at it for a while, so you've gotten over that, I assume. Or do you yeah. still have any discomfort? Is it pretty? No, I don't have any discomfort. Yeah, okay. So early on, do you remember what it was like to just sort of try and pick yeah. up the phone for the next call? I do. I actually remember the very first call I ever made. I was 18. Um, I called this guy, and I wasn't even a collector at that point. I was tracing, so I was only trying to locate people. Uh, this man picks up the phone and he had this uh, deep bellowing voice and he just started screaming and swearing and calling me every name in the book. 
And that's uh, call number one. That was that was my very first call in the industry. <laughs> it it was horrible. <laughs> and I ended up hanging up the phone and crying because I no thought, doubt. oh my gosh, how how could somebody be so cruel and insensitive? And like I I'm only trying to do my job of what I'm what I'm doing and He's just taking everything out on me as a punching bag. And there's day one. So how? Uh, so did you think, oh, this is maybe a mistake? Yeah. Yeah. You uh, know, there's many, there's many times uh, in that instance and many times over the years where I thought, you know, maybe this isn't for me. Um, it just, it, it got kind of difficult or I couldn't do it or just, you know, all these different things with collecting money from people. And then one day. It just kind of clicked that at the end of the day, this is a business transaction. I'm doing my job. Uh, It's nothing personal. Right. I mean, people have bought things and now they don't want to pay for them. Exactly. And and when you look at it at that, it's these people signed up for things and now they have to repay them. Unfortunately, you're you're the middleman and you're the bad guy because you have to hold them accountable for what they're taking out. Right. So you're the punching bag at the end. So what, now what are the what qualifications do you need to be a debt collector? Because you go to job fairs on behalf of the company and stuff, and you're sort of out there because you love people, clearly. Yeah, like I, d- you, I do love people. Obviously. And that's one of the things that Brian talked about as well, CEO and president, is he talks about how it's a people business, mm-hmm. which every time one of you guys says that, it surprises me. I know it's true. I get it. But it, it's it's sort of it's almost like you have to be reminded. Um, so what 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 are those things? What are those qualifications or qualities? Is it more qualifications or is it more the quality of a person? I think for, it's for more. Of the, I think it's more of the quality of person. Um, I mean, the, the qualifications, you just need to use the computer, be decent on the phone and be willing to learn. What are personality traits that are 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 good. What are the things about a person that would be really helpful for debt collection? Uh, an outgoing person, somebody with a, you know, a little bit stronger personality. Um, have good patience. How about persistence? Do you need to kind of be someone who just bulldog stuff? Just grab on and give it a, just yeah. don't let go? Yeah, a little bit. Like um, with the job, you're not, <laughs> it's not a job that you can just go in and overnight say, hey, uh, I'm wonderful at this and I know everything of what to do and what to say. And it's not about that. It's about learning the people that are on the phone and how to help each individual because every single call is different. There's a lot of the same similarities in it, but a lot of it is different and it's dealing with an individual and their certain uh, financial things in their life that you can help them with not only that account, but their other accounts and their other finances too and maybe direct them in other places. Um, right. Negotiation skills? Do you need to be a good negotiator? Yes. Can you learn to be a good negotiator? Does it help to sort of have those chops? Uh, it kind of helps to have it, but I think I think anybody can learn anything almost. Right. You just have to learn, or you just have to want it. That's fair. Almost as in anything. You're really hiring a person, not a skill set or ability. Yeah. So you need to teach them to have patience, uh, empathy. Um. Interesting empathy. Let's expand on empathy a little bit. Well, you need to emphasize with these people, you're calling them for money. You're asking them their financial information and you're trying to get their almost their story at the end of the day, because when they tell you their story, it's going to open up the avenues of where you can direct them of how to help them out because they're in a tough situation. I mean, some people come in the office and they just don't want to pay. That's fine. But a lot of it is people end up in these situations not by choice. Right. They end up in these situations based off of things that happen in their life, and some of them are uncontrollable. Now, when you, when you have, so speaking to the empathy part of, of the collector job, because I think most people would assume that you're just going to be a jerk, like you're just really all about the money. Is, is it experience that helps you sort out the people who are just blowhards and making stuff up? and people who have an actual story? Like, can you tell the difference between the two? Yeah, you can. And if you ask questions, the story always comes out. Right. So you can you can lie and you can say whatever you want, but it's not going to help you at the end. When a person's been doing this for said years, um, we've heard it all. Right. So just be honest. Right. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, if if a debt collector is calling me, my first thought is it's kind of like a car salesman. They do this every day, and I am unarmed. <laughs> like I'm just not prepared yeah. for this. This is not going to be in my favor. And and the, ultimately for debt, you're probably not in the right. Have you ever had an episode where you've collected from someone and then ended up hiring them? Yes. Yeah, we do it all the time. And have you worked with someone you've actually collected from personally? Yeah. Really? How did that go? It was fine. Yeah. At at the end yeah. of the day, it's business. If you, everybody ends up in uh, an unfortunate situation, sometimes these days it seems like money because that's all it is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. But if people are willing to make the effort to pay these down and and do everything, why wouldn't we give them an opportunity? Everybody has a downfall, and everybody goes through life situations. When calls get really emotional, how do you deal with that? I have to keep my emotions out of it because it's it's a job. Uh, I can emphasize with these people, but my job at the end of the day is to direct them to what's going to help them. So I'm going to emphasize with their situation. I'm going to listen to what is going on and direct them in the best possible option for them and whether or not they want to take that is uh, is up to them. Do you have a favorite call you remember? My my favorite calls, I don't know if I can pinpoint an actual favorite right now. Um but my favorite calls are the ones that they come in guns ablazing, they're just so emotional and so upset about everything and when you start explaining everything to them and you stay calm and deal with it, it can go either two ways. Sometimes they swear and hang up on you and sometimes they apologize. And most of the ones that swear and hang up, they end up calling back and say, hey, I'm a real big jerk and I'm I'm really sorry about that. Now, I have I have been on the call floor and listened to you making calls and it it's I can only imagine what's going on on the other end of the call, but so often you're always sort of advancing the conversation. Like you're always driving to the, okay, but how are we going to get this debt taken care of? How are we going to retire this debt? And and it's always fascinating to me how you guys always just, you have that singular focus of get recovering that debt. How, how like, how do you keep the presence of mind when you've got someone who's giving you the, you know, a long yarn about all this stuff and what they can and can't do? How do you cut through all that chaff to finally just get them to say, come on, let's just finish this up? Well, you just have to, sometimes you just have to take a step back. You have to let them vent, let what they need to say out. And then you approach only the things that are, um, you approach only the things that are regarding the debt. So you leave all the emotional aspect out of it. You leave the personal stuff out of it. You go back to the facts that you signed up for the services. You took this out. Now you need to repay it. Everybody has a story, but at the end of the day, uh, most of it, you all owe it back. So talk about, let's, let's get to some sort of mechanics of it. What are, what are the job duties specifically of a, of a debt collector? Well, a debt collector, you go in, you're calling people, you're negotiating the payment of the debt, whether that be in payments or payment in full or... Uh, depending, you know, there could be programs available to you if it's uh, certain certain clients or certain things. But your job is to basically contact these people, uh, not collect the accounts, but help these people find solutions to their problems. What's the first thing if someone says no? How do you how do you try to help? Well, I ask them if they want my my help in going forward with it. Uh, m- for the most part, people say yes, and then you kind of take their financial information. Uh, ask what their current situation's like, and then go from there to see what best possible options are for them to either make payments, um, secure maybe alternate financing, or doing something that's going to help them out. You figure out what their other debts are, including this, and give them the best route to take. We do it as helping people because there's all these companies out there, credit counseling, all these different debt solution companies, they're all taking a, a cut of what uh the advice that we basically give right um they're giving you something and you're paying for it you've talked to thousands of people 
obviously. Are there types of of debtors? There's generally about three types of debtors. There's the debtor that calls in and they know that they made a mistake and they want to honor that mistake. And whether that's however they want to deal with it, uh, they're decent, they know, and it's easy to do the call. Uh, Your second type of debtor is the debtor that calls in who is irate, upset at everybody but themselves for, for putting them in there, but they don't want to take the responsibility of them themselves putting them in there. Um, and then the third debtor is just someone that just physically can't do anything and maybe they want to, but there's just no means to do it. Mm. And those are the tough ones. Right. The ones that that really want to do something, but they just don't have the means to. Like, would that be someone on AISH or some sort of assistance yeah. and that kind of thing? Yeah. Oh, that'd be tough. Yeah. Yeah. Th- those ones pull on your heartstrings a little bit when you... You know, you're doing everything possible to help them, um, and there's just no, there's no solution to help them. Or no easy or good solution, anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there's not an appropriate one to direct them to, other than trying to get a better income or right. anything like that, which is, if you're on a fixed income, that's impossible. Right. So that's got to be one of the harder things. What's the worst part of the job? The worst part of the job? Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if I, there's, there's worse parts to every job, but I think for me personally, I don't think that, uh, there's, I don't really have any downfalls with the job, but I've also learned to, um, emotionally deal with everything. I mean, you're in, you're in a somewhat negative, not environment, but on the calls, you can go from one to a hundred and the one call to the next. Right. So you have to really take a step back and look at yourself and how you're approaching it. And if you always look at it as you're helping people and you're finding solutions for them and not just collecting a debt. Right. I think that that's what the biggest thing is. Well, you found meaning. Yeah. You found a way to make it meaningful. Um, Favorite part of the job. My favorite part of the job is helping people. So really, just that thing that sort yeah. of, you know, you've, you've told me before, you've had some pretty remarkable experiences with people you've collected. Yeah, I still have people that call me uh, years that I dealt with years and years ago, and they've come into a little bit of a hiccup again in their finances or different things. And they contact me to help them figure out a solution or give them advice on certain things because I'm the only person that they trust. That is amazing. It's that a is, really amazing feeling. Didn't you get chocolates at Christmas? Yeah. Like, I just, you know, it's just not the thing you expect. You know, no. it's debt collection. Like, we're, we're always talking about the negativity. This whole episode is really sort of trying to debunk the myths of, of debt collection is a terrible job. And you're sitting here smiling, saying, I love it. I've got a great life. You know, I travel. I have a home, blah, blah. Like, all this stuff. It's all good. Because at the end of the day, you have to think, okay. You're calling people for money. They're taking it out on you. And like I tell my staff all the time, you're the punching bag. Really, you really are. So you have to take it with a grain of salt and think, you know, these people must be really upset if they're getting that upset with me. Um, Something is really going on in their personal life. And Mm -hmm. you can't take it personally. You just it's business. So at the end of the day, you do your call. You help them the best that you can of what they want. And then you move on. For me, the moving on part would be hard. (laughs) It would be really hard. I'm one of those people that stews over stuff and thinks about it too much. And it yeah, would be you really... get over it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you have to. Yeah, that's fair. You're you're taking call after call after call, and every story is different. You're trying to help them in all pretty much the same way. Yeah, it's not like there's a lot of variety in terms of debt. It's just you haven't paid your debt. Pay it. There's got to be a lot of variety in the excuses you hear. Yeah, that's got to get creative sometimes. Oh yeah. Any good ones? Uh, what's your favorite? You got what's like the best excuse? Oh my gosh, there's so many. One one actually emailed me and said, um, "Sorry, I couldn't do the payment. My my dog ate it." <laughs> and <laughs> seriously, <laughs> it was just a yeah. It was really funny. Um, but there's there's just every excuse and any excuse. I had some guy say that he got robbed by a girl because he brought her home after the bar that night and she took all his money. So he, he couldn't pay his account the next day. 
I told him, well, you shouldn't be bringing random girls home. Right. Go to better bars. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or something. Anything and everything and whether or not it may be true. Sometimes I think that they just say it to get a, a rise out of you. Have you ever started laughing on the phone? Yeah. Oh, have you? Yeah. Uh, not not at the person, but maybe at the comment. Right. And it's unprofessional a little bit, and it's not meant to be laughing at them. And I do kind of chuckle, but I, I also bring it back and say, you know, like, let's be serious here. Right. Yeah. Like, there's a point where. Yeah. Like, there's a point where you have to say, you're not being truthful now, and you're you're just being ridiculous. The dog ate my mortgage. How big is your dog? Yeah. <laughs> Those things are huge. Yeah. You're trying to form a relationship with a person who has broken trust with a company. And you're standing in for the company. So do you feel that responsibility to protect that customer for, the, for your client? I think that if you're listening to the person on the phone and they have a legitimate reason um, or they, you know, they really didn't get the services or the things that they they got from their end, absolutely. I will fight for that person because just in the same way that if you signed up for these certain products and you owe them, if you don't owe them, I'm going to help you find your solution to get out of that too. Now, does that happen where people actually aren't on yeah. the hook? Yeah. So there's a mistake somewhere? Yeah, there's a, you know, sometimes it's clerical, sometimes it's fraud, sometimes it, it, there's multiple different things. Is there is there a problem with identity theft? Yeah. Okay, we'll have to do an episode on that. How about the people you work with? I love the people I work with. Tell, tell me a bit about them. We're a crazy, we're a crazy bunch. Uh, everybody is very unique in their own way. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a fun, it's a fun atmosphere. Um, we just have a good laugh, a good time. You guys get free breakfast. Yes, we do. What else do you get for benefits? Uh, we get fruit that comes in every Monday. And we have a discount on our gym membership for the YMCA. Anything with transport, bus passes? Oh, yeah. We have um, the bus pass program. So we do take a little part of that off of your, uh, off the bus pass. So you can take that off your check. We have benefits. Benefits are pretty standard. Everyone's yeah. got benefits. And yeah, they're pretty standard for that. Uh, we do like charities and certain other events. I was going to say you do lots of charitable yeah, work. And collecting yeah. Collecting clothing we, and stuff like that we do lots of that so we put ourselves out there doing that kind of stuff so are, are you hiring right now we're always hiring you're always hiring what's the hardest thing about the job the hardest it's getting on the phone and and actually calling people and asking them for money right and not and and still holding your ground in things because you're asking people for money they're saying yeah sure i'll, I'll do whatever or they're swearing at you but you still have a service to do to your client mm-hmm so you're trying to help them, but you're also trying to service your client. So you have two two separate people that you're trying to service, essentially. Right. And I think that's what people get caught up on is that you're calling to collect that money, but you're also trying to help these people. When these people are coming back at you and arguing and fighting and doing everything, it, it becomes a little bit difficult for some people to handle. All over the Met Credit Office are signs that say, Respect. I mean, it is it is clearly a, a big cornerstone of everything you do. Can you talk about that? Because, you know. Yeah, that's part of our code of ethics. So it's respecting the individual at all times, whether that's your employee, uh, your teammate, or the person on the phone or a client. It's just basic human nature that you should treat everybody with respect and hope that it comes back to you. That's all for this episode of Overdue Advice. Thank you to MedCredit Collection Manager, Katrina Nilsson, and thank you for listening. MedCredit is on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter at MedCredit. Visit Brian Sommerfeld's blog at blog.medcredit.com. It also includes useful tools and calculators to assess your business debt risk. We want to hear from you. Subscribe, like, or leave a review to the podcast or share it with a friend or business associate. It really does help others find the important information on here. You can drop us a line at overdueadvice at medcredit.com. Overdue Advice is the podcast about cash flow strategies to grow your business. Thanks for listening. I'm Andrea Schwabi. Oh, 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 oh,